In Somalia, American troops have traded fire with armed bandits, Marines, and a helicopter gunship strafed and bombed snipers on the ground. Here in New England, the battle is with the elements. Snow has piled up in the interior while waves are pounding the coast. The News at 10 is next. Live from Channel 56, the News at 10. Good evening, I'm Barbara Morse. Well, the word upon everyone's lips is wow. This massive winter storm has been pounding away at us for more than a day and a half now. Most of Massachusetts is under a state of emergency, and National Guard troops have been called up to cope with incredible amounts of snow inland, punishing tides along the coast. And it's at the coast that we begin our storm coverage tonight. Our first report is from the north with Bill Rapley in Gloucester. When Neptune flexes his muscles, nobody can keep away. The Tullys own a front row seat. We're used to uh, living on the ocean, as my husband said. When you live by the shore all your life, you just, uh, you couldn't live elsewhere. Do you become frightened at all when these storms come in? No, no. It's spectacular to watch it. And we do feel as if we can get out if we have to. Storms like today's, though, remind owners again October storm. of the price of proximity. We've been nervous for the last couple of days, actually, but, uh, you know, what can you do? If the, it's a consequence of living here. A lobsterman's tools become souvenirs as the sea shows it can be a heartless employer. Buoys rip off and you have no idea where they are. It's just virtually uh, Davy Jones's property afterwards. SBA owns it from the last time. We're still making payments on 20-year uh, payments for the loans we got last year. This road is still being rebuilt after that Halloween storm in 91. You can see it's come a long way, though today it was strictly for pedestrian storm enthusiasts. Today's tides were rebuffed by the seawalls, but they still thrilled. Oh, well. This is what I'm looking for, water up to my thighs, drenched. The Wolverines are no longer successful at a particular moment. And you call this fun? This is a blast. <laughs> this is what I live for, this is why I live up the street. And it's what inevitably draws us to come to the edge when it seems the ocean is overflowing. In Gloucester, Bill Rapley, Channel 56, the news at 10. Wow. Now in Gloucester and elsewhere along the coast, officials are extremely busy tonight. Hundreds of people have been evacuated. Revere, for instance, is housing many of its residents in shelters, waiting for the next high tide. And the National Guard is operating a command center out of the Wonderland dog track. In Swampscott, right now, there's a battle underway to save three houses in danger of slipping into the sea. In Boston, Mayor Ray Flynn declared a state of emergency about midway through the day. The storm was bad enough in the city to close Logan Airport for about three hours. Among those stranded for a while, the New England Patriots. They did manage to get an afternoon flight to Kansas City to play the Chiefs tomorrow. On the coast, Quincy's been hard hit. Dozens of homes are flooded out, and the National Guard is helping residents to safety if they haven't gotten there already. The fire department's at work, too, using hovercraft. Mayor James Sheets says the hovercraft have been a real blessing, helping rescue workers speed from point to point over firm ground and flooded out roads. Well, at the height of the storm, state officials estimated coping was costing about $100,000 an hour. In Brockton, Boston Edison says heavy weather knocked out a major power circuit. That one outage by itself cut power to nearly 27,000 customers. And everywhere along the South Shore, just as on the North, today's weather is churning up memories of the Halloween storm last year. Kathy Cowan has our next report from Situate. The scene is hauntingly familiar. This home on Oceanside Road was floating in eight feet of water. Mother Nature cast aside man's warning signs and invaded many of the beachfront areas, including 6th Street. Just a few streets away, this boat floated off its trailer and ended up in the Flaherty's front yard. So you get a, a boat in your front yard, the water's going into your living room. Why does your family choose to stick it out? I don't know. It's a funny thing. My parents got back from Florida last night, and they always do. They've been here, my father's been here since he was a little kid, so they just like the neighborhood. So am I. You can't beat this stuff. But there are others who just don't see it that way. The Swikowitz has waited out the storm at a Red Cross shelter. Well, I guess maybe it makes you realize that um, better start collecting precious moments. 
because there's a lot of uncertainty in the world. Well, this is the moment that South Shore residents anxiously awaited. It's dead high tide, and with an estimated tidal surge of 15 feet, the roads have once again turned into rivers. The Fredericks packed it in and left their Sand Hill neighborhood at the height of the storm. How are you dealing with this psychologically after going through this just one year ago? Well, you can do to it. I mean, I mean, it's, um, you can either get very upset about it or you can just kind of ride with it. And we've chosen just to take it as it comes. But Jim Malarkey wasn't going anywhere except for a walk to assess the damage. It's not fun. Uh, the one thing I can think about though is that maybe I'll be able to tell my grandchildren I'll be the only guy they know to rode out 500 years long for the last 30 years. So. But for many others, December 12th will go down as a bad memory. In situ at Kathy Kalman, Channel 56, the news at 10. Well, just how wild is this storm? Marine biologists are hard at work tonight on Cape Cod trying to rescue dozens of beached whales. Apparently, the churning of the ocean has scrambled the whales' sense of direction, and whales have come ashore in at least four locations. Well, the storm is out at sea now, but it doesn't seem to be over for us just yet. Jim Corbin's tracking it all in the Weather Center, and he joins us now. Jim, what are you seeing? Well, Barbara, what I am seeing is a storm that simply will not stop. Just when you thought things were kind of winding down later this afternoon, things are beginning to pick up once again. Latest radar is showing lots of precipitation spinning in off the ocean from the east. And over the last hour, the snow has changed, or the rain has changed back to snow in Boston. And I am looking for at least another inch or two in many parts of eastern sections of Massachusetts, even parts of Rhode Island and Connecticut. Also, we're going to be dealing with a very high tide once again tonight and once again tomorrow afternoon. However, not quite as bad as it was today. I'll have a full forecast for you in just a few minutes. Barbara? Thank you, Jim. And we've got the snow story coming up as our storm coverage continues on the News at 10. A special holiday message from 20th Century Fox. Any way you say it. Toys! Coming out at Christmas. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday at theaters everywhere. Another Meineke profile of the smart and thrifty. There he is! He's not a celebrity, he's not a millionaire, but he knows how to enjoy life. And how did he get to this serene setting, casting his fate to the wind this weekend? It's no secret, he saved his pennies. He went without lunch a few times. And I didn't pay a lot for a muffler at Meineke. <laughs> Come to Meineke Discount Mufflers, the muffler and brake specialist, where you'll get more life out of your car and more miles for your dollar. At Meineke, you're not going to pay a lot for a muffler. Capture the ones you love without missing out on the fun yourself with a Sony Handycam, America's most popular camcorder. For a snow thrower that will handle any snowfall, we suggest a Toro Power Curve. They're lightweight, easy to handle, and throw snow up to 30 feet. So they're perfect for those times when it really comes down. See the complete line of Toro Power Curve snow throwers at these Toro dealers. The consumer has to take responsibility. Find out more about what you're buying. Make sure that what they are advertising is the truth. Sit down and do a little research yourself. Doing apples to apples, the days you've called, the times you've called. Let's the... compare the phone bill. You tell me how much you paid, then I'll call you back and we'll talk the same length of time, and I'll tell you how much I paid. Do the research yourself, and then make your own decision. I made a conscious decision to switch over to MCI. They're at the top 
for value, and nothing can compare to that. Well, this winter storm has two faces. Tonight, many inland residents are finding themselves buried in snow. In New Hampshire, ski resorts are glad to be knee-deep in the white stuff, but just about everywhere else, there is little cheer, especially if you happen to be out in it. In Rhode Island, some areas were clobbered with more than a foot of snow. It made staying on the road a real effort. And for many who stayed indoors, a problem of a different sort, no electricity. And that meant that in some areas, businesses were forced to remain closed. Well, the business of digging out from under is booming out in western Massachusetts. The Berkshires are a winter postcard scene, but in some areas, the winter storm is posing real dangers. Massachusetts Electric estimates that more than 69,000 customers are without power tonight. For many of them, that means no heat and no hot water. For our storm coverage from the western part of the state, we've got Sean Lonergan from Worcester. Worcester's downtown was nearly shut down today. The city hall looked abandoned. Christmas shopping was suspended as a battle was underway with whipping winds and 27 inches in 24 hours. Yeah, we've got four shelters open now. At Civil Defense Headquarters, okay. officials and volunteers were answering nearly 30 calls a minute. There are about probably 30,000 mass electric customers uh, without power. We've got uh, large portions of the city that have been without power and therefore heat since last night. To help, dozens of reservists are being called in. But earlier, evacuations were being made by a handful of ham radio operators. I take medication for high blood pressure. You have medication? Florence Jaworski and two dozen others at her elderly housing home were evacuated to this high school. The electricity went off, the heat went off. So that's why we're here. We're cold. Mass electric crews are working double shifts, as are city firemen. Extra police have been called in as well. Police know where the power outages are, but they're not certain where all the telephone lines may be down, and that concerns them. There may be elderly people or shut-ins who need help but can't telephone for it. So they're asking neighbors to check on other neighbors. Earlier, some found this logistical nightmare to be a pretty nice wonderland. Skiers seized the day, friends strolled to shop for dinner, and the kids awesome. wished it all hit at midweek. Yeah, it is fun, though, considering we haven't had a good snowfall in a couple of years now. It's it's about time we did. But officials again fear the night and the total costs. The airport at the city's apex is closed and somewhere down under. Only Worcester can claim it set a record in this blizzard in inches and backaches. In Worcester, Sean Lonigan, Channel 56, the news at 10. Well, this was supposed to have been one of the busiest Christmas shopping days of the year, but while foul weather kept scores at home, some mall managers were amazed at how many did turn out. At Boston's downtown crossing, scores, um, scores of bargain hunters braved intense wind and treacherous footing to pick up that perfect gift. Those who ventured out to avoid the crowds found they weren't alone. Oh, yes, yeah, very crowded, yes, yeah, especially in um, some of the major stores, it was very crowded. Yeah, little, other little stores got a little um, busy, but, you know, it was a good crowd. Some malls, such as Burlington and the Arsenal in Watertown, closed early but had a hard time persuading shoppers to leave. Managers say about 50% of the average pre-Christmas shopping crowd turned out. Well, we did want to look overseas for a moment. In Somalia, American troops dodged gunfire as they flew over that country's capital. The troops were shot at as they conducted reconnaissance missions over Mogadishu. Two Cobra attack helicopters fired back, destroying their assailants' trucks. The helicopter replied in a very strong way, which fits American doctrine of use overwhelming force if you get into a fight, and it's also the safe way to do it, and we hope that the lesson is conveyed. U.S. officials are not sure how many Somalis were killed in the attack. Meanwhile, other U.S. troops helped to deliver the first shipment of food to reach Somali since Operation Restore Hope began. Well, there is more to come on the News at 10. We've got a full sports report coming up. And after all this talk of stormy weather, Jim Corbin will tell if and when it will ever end. Jim's got the forecast when we come back. Yo, Frosted Flakes fans, got a sweet spot. Hit it with a sweet shot. Wheat is honey gold.
It's hard to resist a man who's good at making a woman feel great. I take it we're not going out.